You know, um, I saw I saw a video the other day saying that Valhalla is a uh, a game for no one, and um, I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to disagree with that. I, I don't feel this game is that much of a um, a waste of resources, right? Uh, it may have flopped upon its initial release. And again, I'm going to say I feel like that comes down to, just like in my last video, like gamer fatigue. If you played Assassin's Creed Origins and you put like hundreds of thousands of hours into that, and then you played Odyssey and absolutely spent thousands of hours in that game, then by the time you get to this game, you're going to be burned out. Now, I didn't, again, I didn't sink hundreds, thousands of hours in uh, Assassin's Creed Origin or Odyssey. I didn't even play Odyssey uh, because we're talking about Greek history. And although I, I have all the respect in the world for ancient Greek culture and whatnot, it wasn't my cup of tea, so I completely passed up on it. Um, I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Origin, and uh, it was fantastic. Uh, but then I got into this one, right? Because this one intrigued me more. It it's a little closer to home because I'm a Nor like I'm a Kelto, Germanic pagan, um, Scotch, Norwegian sort of on my mom's side. So uh, you know uh, certain um, st certain themes and topics and and uh, myths within within that uh, that realm really resonates with me deeply spiritually so it just clicked with me and uh yeah i'm a filthy pagan however uh, <laughs> but this game appeals to the history buff if you've ever wanted to explore the british uh countryside after the romans had completely abandoned uh england or well it would be britain it wouldn't be england yet uh Oh yeah, Britain, no England, yeah, yeah, the the Angles, yeah, uh, and you get to see like London. I think I spent an entire hour in in London or the city that would become London, right? And uh, you get to see how it was obviously a Roman city or settlement, and then you see how the uh, uh, the Anglo-Saxons are starting to build on top of that foundation. And I really loved uh, the interpretation of what London would have looked like at this time. I, I, I found that fascinating. I find the world fascinating uh, because I'm a huge history buff. And, you know, it deals with Northern European uh, paganism and stuff like that, which will always intrigue me. And... Uh, uh, mostly the game does a great job expressing certain uh, subjects related to uh, things you could find in the sagas. I feel like a lot of this is drawn from the sagas. I feel like uh, Eivor's uh, brother or, or blood brother Sigurd is uh, in fact based off of Sigurd of Northumbria. A historical figure I really do and so it would make sense that the female Ivor or Eivor would would be the uh, the actual choice in this story because Sigurd had a sister Sigurd of Northumbria had a sister which makes the female Eivor make much more sense in the story if that's who they based it off of uh, if you are looking for an experience and you're not just looking to beat a video game, I think Valhalla is a fantastic game. I've literally spent the last three hours just deciding to track down assassination targets. If I decided to play this game tomorrow, I may decide to just go hunting and fishing for my settlement. It's uh, like games like this, I, I think it comes down to gamer fatigue with a franchise. They want to dive into the to the very next version of the last thing they played and they get yeah, absolutely they get absolutely 
bored with whatever they're trying to do with the game because it feels like something they've already sunk thousands of hours in. But that's something they chose to do. They chose to buy this game knowing full well this is another iteration of what they sunk thousands of hours into. And on Ubisoft's credit, I really feel like this game feels like something, at least partially, they wanted to make someone's forever game. This is going to be like somebody's Skyrim. This is going to be somebody's destiny or, you know, just, just somebody's forever game. And it definitely feels like this game was meant to be like, for, like that for someone, right? Um, for history buffs and people who want to go out and explore a, a, a landscape and have adventures uh, or a landscape that's based on, you know, actual history... Uh, I don't think they did a terrible job here at all. Uh, I can easily see myself, I mean, like, okay, I've put in, I guarantee you, 90 hours into this game so far. I've unlocked most of the map. I haven't done hardly anything, I don't think. I have no idea how much longer this story gets on because. I've been so sidetracked with, okay, today I want to explore this region. I want to find artifacts. I just want to go around raiding bandit camps. Or uh, maybe like today I wanted to work on the assassination contracts that I've put off totally. I haven't fooled with assassination stuff at all. So I've been, just been kind of doing that. I have explored the... Uh, the Island of Sky, which it was it wasn't the whole island, I don't think. It was part of the island which I was really ups I was like, No Uh I have all the DLC content for this game. Like, I'm ready to go to Ireland. I'm ready to go to Paris. But I'm still just enjoying I'm still just enjoying the English countryside. After ninety hours, I'm still enjoying my time with this game. Because I'm not looking to beat this game. I will beat this game whenever I beat this game. But I'm in no rush to do that. Because I'm just enjoying the experience. And honestly, I think that's all you really can do with a game like this. If you are looking to beat a game, speedrun games, trophy hunt... I could see you having a horrible time with this game. It would probably feel absolutely suffocating to track down every piece of paper explore every abandoned ruin oh yeah yeah I get it but if you're just looking for an, for uh, like a video game experience an open world experience and you're not in a rush to beat the game this is not a bad game so yeah for the video uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a video game for no one I beg to differ I think if you are uh, if, if you're looking for an open world adventure based in uh, like early English history and uh, you want some fun not overly complicated combat and you want lots of things to do and explore and you want to you want to you know role play and building a settlement and you know building alliances this is not a bad game but if you want wanted to just get through the game as, as quickly as possible uh, and have that choice to do so this will not be that game right like uh, content creators content creators had uh, got their hands on the game and they wanted to hurry up and get it done so they could get their, their review video out because everybody wanted to be first, right? Everybody wants to be first to review a game and most of them despise the fact that they were constantly, like, they had to grind out the time they were in it just to get to the end game stuff, right? And they despised it. That's because they were in a hurry to get, get the game done with. That, that was their bag, right? They were they were in a hurry to get the game over with, and so they hated the game. Um, 
And I had even seen like one or two videos where somebody actually did a video saying, you know, Valhalla is actually a really fun game. And they, they would admit that when they first played the game, they were trying to hurry up and get it done so they could review it. And they realized what a terrible mistake that was. They should have just played the game, ignored the, re the, the review window, you know, to get those clicks in on YouTube, and just played the game for what it was. It's a Viking Age experience set in England, historical England, and uh, it's cool. And for me personally, a hack and slash adventure like this, the fact that I've been, I put 90 hours into this game and not one time have I had to kill a mother effing dragon. Is there dragons in this game? There better not be. <laughs> it's like, um, maybe there is, but it's been 90 hours and I haven't, I haven't had to slay one dragon. Okay. I find that refreshing. It's based on history and, and less on freaking fantasy. So I appreciate that. Um. For the history buff and pagan in me, personally, I always have a really fun time with this. Who knows? Tomorrow I could get on and I could just go hunting and fishing for the entire time I'm playing it. Just because I feel like it. Or maybe I want to go exploring ruins. Just because I feel like it. Or maybe I want to stay in like one region of the map and just make sure I've seen everything there is to see. Maybe I feel like doing that. But either way, I'm in no rush to get this game done with. Um, I'm at the point right now to where because this is, this is a save from the cloud. This isn't like the very last time I played the game. I had actually went with Sigurd back to Norway, you know, and he's really getting on my nerves, by the way, with his freaking... He, he's the god... Tear in incarnate. Sure you are. Yeah, sure you are. See good. Um, the only thing I really don't like about this game, and it's not something that I hate, uh, it's um, that thing where you drink some tea and you go to Valhalla and and you be you know you take on the role of Odin, and the way that they present Odin in this uh, in this game is very much a Snorri Sturluson or uh, Grammaticus Saxo sort of way, which would make sense because those are the two popular sources when it comes to the to the Nordic gods or the uh, the northern Europe the, the northern gods, right? Um, Odin is very greedy and he's very he's like he's his ambition drives him to no end. You know, he'd be willing to take advantage of your wife and you know Kick your puppy, steal steal the remote to your TV. You know, just real sick sick shit. Just to, just to do you know, just to do what he needs to do to get what he wants. Um, and and that portrait right there is is predominantly painted by Sonori Stilson and Saxo. But if you look at um, what we do know about Odin, he was a lot more complicated. He's well, he is a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> He's um, been eating fish. He's not. Um, he's not. Uh, he he does have a dark side, which all gods have a dark side. But he's not purely dark, and he's not purely ambition driven. Um. But they do. They portray him as a, a very ambitious, uh, stubborn, ruthless pers personality, and that's uh, that's not. That's not entirely like a genuine uh, take on him. It's just something. Uh, it's, well, maybe one day we'll get into it and I'll explain exactly why. That's just like, it just makes my eyes roll. I'm like, whatever. I, I did go to Valhalla or Asgard and I did spend a little time fighting up in Asgard, being Odin. And, you know, there was the puzzle you had to solve with Tyr, who's, uh, who's, who's, uh, Sigurd. Right, um, you know, and and it was just okay. Like I couldn't wait get, to get back to this part of the gameplay because this is the one that this is the part that really interests me, like exploring historical England. Um, the uh, the Asgard part of this uh, this story feels like it's very tacked on 
to the point where I would rather go back to Vinland again with none of my gear than to go back to Asgard and deal with that crazy version, uh, Ubisoft version of, of things that happened in the Eddas. It's, it's, it's just okay, and it doesn't interest me at all. Um, but anyway, yeah, that uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is not a game for no one. It may not be for everyone, but this game has been a real fun game to play. It's been, oh my gosh, it's so effing pretty. This game is, it's eye candy to the max. It's disgustingly pretty. I'm never bored. Whenever I, whenever I, I jump into this world, I'm never bored. And if I'm ever needing a break, then I just go play something else. Just go play something else. You don't have to sit there and grind out 2,000 hours of your life. I mean, trying to 100% this game. If, I mean, this this is not a very good game for that. Okay? Yeah, you're going to... You, I, if I was a trophy hunter, I would hate this game. But I'm not. I'm just a gamer. I'm just a gamer who enjoys a really cool experience. And that's what Valhalla is. It is a really cool experience. But do not spend, you know, I, this is not a game that you could spend hundreds of hours. Uh, like, this would be the game that you play for days upon days upon days. I, I could not see that. Um, this is not one of those games. You need some variety in your life, right? But anyway, yeah, Valhalla is fantastic. This is one of the few games that I actually bought all the DLC content for. I've got uh, I've got the uh, Siege of Paris, and I've got uh, the Wrath of the Druids, and I got a what is it? A other small quest. Um, without hesitation, I'm like, yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Shut up and take my money. Not a problem at all. Uh, the Ragnarok expansion. Yeah, I'm gonna skip that one. I have no desire to play, to play uh, Sass, uh, Valhalla Ragnarok. No, not really. Uh, I'm good right here. I am so good with this. I I don't uh, I don't want any more of the mystical side of of whatever the whatever they're doing here. Um, Leave the mystical stuff to me, okay? That's that's my department. That's how I feel, right? I I don't um, I don't want Ubisoft's version of Ragnarok any more than I want Ubisoft's version of Ad Asgard. <laughs> no thanks. But uh, Val uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla itself, like as far as like historical stuff, super cool. Love this game. If you're looking for somewhat of like a casual adventure. Uh, set in historical England and you're willing to put it up once in a while okay until you feel like playing it again if you can do that I think you'll really enjoy this game okay so yeah yeah I, I uh, I'm done rambling for now um, Assassin's Creed like I didn't play Odyssey again I'm not into the Greek stuff um, I did like origins uh, I've heard that Origins is the best of this this open world experiment that Ubisoft started. Uh, I, I could see that. I could see that. The, the, the first is always the wow, right? Uh, Assassin's Creed is the last, so maybe the wow factor is just not there anymore for people. And and I get that. I get that. Um, me personally, I I'll, overall I I'm getting burned out with. Uh, open world games period I don't know um, uh, I'll probably be avoiding them for quite a while just because I'm uh, between this game and Far Cry 6 I mean those are some of the biggest open world games that I've uh, I played to date and um, I just can't take any more. All right, that this this is a huge world. Uh, I'm I'm just kind of good. Um, the island of Yara is fascinating. It's gorgeous. Um, 
uh, I think uh, I'm all I'm all tapped out on the open world stuff. I'll probably be looking for like more linear gameplay in the future, just because it would have to be something really exceptional to get my interest as far as open world. That's like Diablo 4. Like I'm open to it because little mama's excited for it. And it is Diablo, right? Of course, they'll probably mess it up just like they messed up Diablo 3 when it first came out. They'll, they'll probably make the same mistakes they made with Diablo 3. Again, the only thing that really saved Diablo 3 was when they took it offline and they, and they uh, put it on consoles. That's what saved Diablo 3. So... But yeah, the, uh, Diablo 4 is going to be online, just like Diablo 3 was. And Diablo 3 was a hot mess as long as it was connected to the internet. So I'm very cautious about that launch. Uh, that's about the only one that'll be an exception to the rule. But as far as like personal tastes in games, I will be avoiding open worlds. Yeah. I think uh, I think I'm good. I'm I'm good. You got uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, freaking Far Cry Six, um, Far Cry Five, Far Cry New Dawn. <laughs> Skyrim's still out there somewhere. Holy cow! I can't believe that. But yeah. Anyway, I am done rambling. You all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, and I will catch you on the flip side.